All right, it's time to put the connecting rods on the pistons. Pretty straightforward. The pistons are all clean. I've got one of the little retaining clips in place. I'm going to uh, line it up so if you look on the pistons, there's a little arrow. That arrow points to the front of the engine. I'm going to line up the printing on the connecting rods with that arrow. Put it in this way. So the first step is to use a little assembly lube, get everything lubed up. I'm going to lube up the, the bores of the piston, the bore of the connecting rod, and also the, the pin itself. Just kind of spread that around. And I'll be able to start sliding the, the wrist pin in on one side, on the side without the, the little retaining clip. And then again, looking where my arrow is, putting the text in that direction. Smear this all the way around in here. There we go. Arrow's pointing this way. Slide that wrist pin all the way in. And now I can put the spring clip in. Putting in these spring clips is sometimes a challenge. I try to, there's a little, a little notch, a little round kind of opening to get your screwdriver in. I want one end to be just past that notch. So I usually try to line it up so that that's the way it'll go. And then with my screwdriver I can kind of, uh, kind of lever it in. Uh, yeah. That didn't quite go as planned. Let's try this again. There we go. Positively clipped into place. So that one's done. Now it's time to install the piston rings. I'm going to go in order, starting with the bottom ring, and work my way up. And I'm going to put a little bit of just uh, light motor oil in the ring grooves. You don't want something as thick as assembly lube for the rings. And for the oil control ring, I'm going to put on the, the little spring, the little coil one first, which has a, a little opening. And in fact, I'm going to put it on so that the, the opening in the coil spring is opposite the gap in the ring that, that goes there. And again, I'm going to use my ring expansion pliers, although this one's pretty lightweight. and make sure it's in that groove.
All right. And then the second ring, again observing the top position, which is the printing. Finally, the top ring, and again observing its position with the printing. Let's put some pistons in the block. I'm going to start out by putting a little bit of oil in each cylinder. Again, this is just uh, like 5W30 motor oil. And it's just to uh, give a little bit of lubrication. Alright, the first thing to do is to line up, this is the number four piston, the first thing to do is to line up the piston rings. So I've got the front of the engine here, I'm going to do the, the top ring uh, next to the arrow, so it's, it would be at this top orientation. The second ring is going to be at the bottom orientation, so they're 180 degrees off from each other. And then the oil control ring I'm going to do towards the back of the engine. So they're kind of staggered kind of three ways. The first two opposite each other and the bottom one to the side. Some people do it as more of a, uh, like a, like a three-sided pie in thirds, but I'm going to do it this way. I've put a little oil on my spring compressor. I'm going to wrap the spring compressor around. I'm actually going to have the spring compressor opening kind of towards the front so that none of the ring gaps are in that area. And this particular spring compressor has a little a little clamp that goes on. I should have gotten this all ready. A little clamp goes into those little notches. And of course you want to have the piston kind of uh, perpendicular or you know evenly placed in, in there. I can start to squeeze it down and then crank it down. The idea is to crank it enough so that actually scooch it up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Crank the ring compressor down so it's completely squeezing all the rings into place. Arrow pointing forward. I'm going to start to slide it in the bore. Being real careful of that connecting rod. It's about to drop into place, making sure the connecting rod is, uh, is straight. And now using the butt end of a rubber mallet, piston straight in there, I'm just going to tap it past the ring compressor and into the bore. And now I've got to push it down a little further. So I can grab the connecting rod and guide the connecting rod over the crankshaft. And 
then I can put the, the bottom connecting rod bearing, the connecting rod bearing cap on. Making sure I line the numbers up. Well, you know what they say about best laid plans and everything. So after putting in the third piston, piston number two, I uh, went to turn it over and found that it doesn't turn over. Something's hitting in the way, both directions. I'm like, what on earth could this be? And uh, doing a little sleuthing and looking, and I figured out what it is. If you look inside the block on this side if you look at cylinder number three the wall is smooth all the way down here to the uh where the where the piston bore is let's see if i can get that in focus yeah so this wall is smooth all the way down cylinder number four smooth all the way down and cylinder number one is smooth all the way down Cylinder number two, oh, there's a good view of it, has that ridge right there, and the connecting rod is banging into that ridge. So I'm going to have to figure out if I don't think there's a hole in that ridge, like I don't think it's an oil passageway or anything, but I'm going to have to go in there with a die grinder and grind it apart, or grind it, clearance it a little bit, but I don't want to do that when it's all assembled because I don't want metal chips to get in there. So, I'm going to take the pistons out, and I'm going to take the crankshaft out. The crankshaft is out, and now you can actually see that, that, you can see that rib much more clearly, that rib that's only in cylinder number two. And you can see, if the camera will focus on it, you can even see the little, where I kind of knocked the connecting rod against it, the two little marks there. So the top mark is on the downstroke, and the bottom mark is on the upstroke. So... That little rib is, if we rotate it, that little rib is this little recessed area around the boss for, I don't know, whatever bolt's there, an engine mount or something. So I can't go all the way through this rib because there's no material back here, but where the boss is, there should be some material. And again, looking at it, I don't have to take much off to kind of connect the dots, you know, connect the dots between those two little, those two little marks. So I'm just going to take a little burr tool, a little carbide burr tool on a die grinder, and I'm going to reach in there and grind it away a little bit.
So look at that, success. I can turn the engine over. So if you look down in cylinder number two, you can see where I kind of, uh, using a, a carbide burr, like a, you know, file, I ground away on that ridge there, and I didn't take off too much material, so I'm not too concerned about uh, the wall thickness or anything like that. Alright, it's time to torque down the connecting rods. Uh, all, at least all aftermarket connecting rods are numbered, a match numbered set with the cap in the, in the rod. The numbers are on this side, and even then they're really not that visible unless you look really closely. But I have just done a visual check to make sure that the number sides are together and that the numbers match, so I didn't mix and match connecting rod caps. We're going to torque these down to, these are ARP bolts and the literature that came with them said to torque them down to 60 foot-pounds. And I just got to put the right size socket on. I'm just kind of snugging them both up first. Sorry, camera. Everything still turns over nice and smoothly. Is a good thing. Turns over nicely on this side too. Thus concludes installing the pistons.